two a day workouts. Are they even worth it? In our last conversation, we talked about overtraining and the dangers of that and exactly what you need to do to avoid the pitfalls of training your body into the ground and not seeing results. And I mentioned in that conversation that there is a time and a place for two a day workouts, but exactly when would you do that? How long would you do it for and for what purpose? And then of course, how do you put this together and not overtrain, honey? That is what we're gonna talk about today on this episode of Redefining Bodybuilding. So the first thing we want to look at is what are some of the benefits of training twice a day? Because for so many of you, this may be one of the best options, depending on what kind of schedule you have, time that you have available to train, whether you're able to hit body parts more than once a week if you're looking to build. So what are the benefits? Well, there are some studies that have shown that increasing training volume and frequency causes an increase in muscle protein synthesis. And this is where we start to see muscle growth happen. So the more often you train, the higher volume you have, the more stress you have put on your body, and the more of a requirement your body is going to have to build muscle, to build tissue, and to see the gains that you want to see in the gym. For so many of you, because you have busy lives and busy schedules, splitting your workouts where you might do one workout in the daytime and something else a little bit more in the afternoon or evening helps you to get everything in that you need to do and work it into your schedule without any excuses. And to be honest with you, I use this strategy a lot with my own clients. I've done it for myself as well, but it's just about putting together your program in a way that makes sense. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. Now I want you to hold on for a second because for those of you who love to work out every day, all day, seven days a week, no rest, there are some drawbacks to this. Now, again, in the last conversation that we have where we talked about overtraining, we talked about how some of you are just training too much and it becomes a game of diminishing returns. And twice a day training can turn into that kind of diminishing return setup if you're not careful. So some of the potential drawbacks, of course, is that you stand the risk of overtraining if you don't know what balance is and you're afraid to include that balance in your approach. Remember, more is more. It isn't necessarily better. Now, you've got to be really careful with twice a day training because you can stand to injure yourself. And if you have old injuries, you might start seeing them creep back in there. So you've got to keep rest in mind. You've got to keep recovery in mind. Remember, you are not building a dang thing in the gym. You are tearing tissue down and it's in the rest time. It's in the time away from the gym that you are actually in that anabolic state. So your training, your diet and everything have to work hand in hand if you're gonna take this twice a day training approach and you gotta do it smart by not overdoing it. Now, you know, here on my podcast and on my channel, we don't go by anecdote. We don't go by fads and gimmicks. We talk about facts here. So what exactly does the science say about training, resistance training, and the type of training that brings on muscle gain in the body. Now, there was a study done back in 2016 led by researcher, exercise physiologist, and expert, one of my favorites, Rad Schoenfeld. And he also did this study with Brett Contreras, also known as the glute guy, another expert exercise physiologist. And they were taking a look at the difference between resistance training with a bodybuilding type of approach versus a powerlifting type of approach. And which one of those would see the most gains when it comes to hypertrophy and which is muscle building and strength gain. And it found that both programs and approaches generally have the same kind of adaptation when it came to hypertrophy and putting on muscle, but the power lifting is where we saw an increase in maximal strength. And that makes a lot of sense when you understand rep ranges and how the body grows and how the body adapts to certain styles of training. But what they found was that resistance training, volume, intensity, all of that had a huge impact on hypertrophy, muscle protein synthesis, and setting your body up for gaining muscle. Now the subjects were trained men who already had a background in working out. They were all drug-free as well. And they divided the men into two groups. 
a group that would do the strength training and a group that would do the more powerlifting type of training. Both of these groups trained three days a week and their rep ranges coincided to the type of adaptations that they wanted to see for the body. So they divided the men into two different groups. They had the ones that were focused on hypertrophy and the ones that were focused on strength. Now the strength training group, the ones that were focused on the more powerlifting type of training, their workout program consisted of compound moves. And for each of the three workouts, they were essentially training the same three body parts every single workout. So you had a chest press of some sort, you had a leg press of some sort, and a lat pull down or any kind of back pull of some sort in each of those workouts. For the hypertrophy group, the ones that were following more of a bodybuilding protocol, their workouts were split up like a bodybuilding split. So they did chest workouts on one day, back workouts on another day, and then they did the leg workouts on a different day, three days a week for both of these groups. Now, by the end of the study, what they found is that both groups saw an increase in muscle tissue and muscle mass. There wasn't a big difference. So what does that mean for you? So that just means that if you're thinking about doing a twice a day split, this can help you to see the gains that you wanna see, provided you do it in a smart way. And so what is a smart way? That's what I want you to think about. And how do you actually put this together with the science and not overtrain yourself? That is something that I'm a bit of an expert in since I've done this for several clients, whether they were competitors or not, and on myself as well. And we're going to go ahead and break that down for you right now. Are you looking to get into the best shape of your life? You want to change your body. You want to take control of your eating. You want to look and feel your best. And you know, right now there's something that's missing in your approach that's just getting you frustrated and getting you stuck and you're ready to do something about it. Well, honey, listen, I am taking on new clients right now and I want to talk to you. Come on over and set up a complimentary 20 minute call so we can discuss exactly what's getting you stuck get you out of your own way and get you on a program that's going to change your life and change your body for good. This fitness stuff isn't just about diet and training. Oh no, honey, it's about mindset. And you know me, we talk about spiritual fitness as well. But what does that mean? And how do you apply it to what you've got going on? The only way we're going to find out is we talk about it, honey. So make sure that you go ahead down below, click the link or scan the QR code that you see on your screen right now to set up your complimentary appointment and discuss how you and I can team up to get you to your goal. So there are two ways I want you to approach this. And both ways are gonna focus on one thing, training smarter, not just harder. If you're gonna take this two a day approach, do not train the same body part in the two separate workouts. Don't do that. Be smart about what you're gonna do. This is gonna be a great way for those of you who have cardio sessions that run a little bit too long or longer than you have in the time that you have your weight training sessions to go ahead and separate them into different workouts. And I love that approach because what I say to my clients when we do this is we're gonna go ahead and put everything we got into your cardio session, put it all in, balls to the wall, I always say. And then when you come back to do your weight training or if you do your weight training earlier on the day, whenever you do it, you wanna go ahead with that same kind of intensity to be able to bring the heat in your workouts. And this is great too, because you get to fuel yourself in between the workouts. For me, ideally, I think it would be a great idea for you to go ahead and stick your cardio in in the morning, particularly for those of you who may be doing fasted cardio. And not that I advocate for fasted cardio that it's good or it's better than doing fed cardio. Actually, the science says is that it's not that much of a difference, except for those of you who may be in a contest prep or you're trying to lose weight and it's the last couple of pounds off and you wanna push the intensity a bit, there may be a case for it, particularly if you're taking your himbine as a supplement when you're doing your cardio. Whole other conversation. But doing it in the morning first thing is one of the things that I love to have my clients do when they're splitting up their workouts. And then having a moment to be able to go throughout your day, fuel your body, eat, and then later on, hit your weight training, ready to go, full intensity, bringing the heat, and having a good time pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. So splitting the workouts between one session of cardio and one se session of resistance training is a great way to do a two a day setup. Now there's another way that you can do this where perhaps 
you go ahead and you do two resistance training workouts on the same day. Now, if you're going to be doing this kind of approach, then I really do suggest you go ahead and reduce the number of days that you are in the gym. So instead of doing five days a week, which you can do with the other setup that I just mentioned, this you might want to do maybe three to four days a week. If you've only got that much time to go ahead and hit up the gym, splitting your workouts and splitting focus for each of those workouts is a great way of getting everything in. Now, what does that look like? For instance, in the study I mentioned earlier, the 2016 study, you could go ahead and do a full body workout three days a week that are hitting relatively the same muscles as long as they're spaced out. So let's say you went ahead and you did a full body push and pull type of workout on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But your goal is fat loss. You want to see yourself lean up. You want to really hold on to as much muscle as possible. So let's say you did that workout early in the morning and then later on in the afternoon you came back and you want to do a little bit more resistance training. Well, instead of going hard and heavy in the gym like you did at the morning session, that's a great time to go ahead and hit up some metabolic circuits, some regular circuits, some interval training, and things that'll help you to be more mobile. You can also do something where you split up your workouts between doing a flexibility, mobility, stability kind of workout. So things that challenge your core, maybe you're training abs, maybe you're doing things that are more functional in movement and you do that for one workout. Perhaps it's a 30 or 45 minute workout you do in the morning. And then later on in the day, you come back to go ahead and you hit up your weight training. Now, you can also do things where you split up your workouts, where in the morning you do upper body, really hard, heavy strength training. And then later on in the day, you might come back and do your lower body workout. Maybe on day two, you'll do a full body program that's more of a circuit training type of program to help with fat loss. Come back in the afternoon or whenever you want to do it, hit up some cardio. Third workout during the week, you can go back to the cycle where you maybe you do lower body in the morning and upper body in the afternoon. So there are different ways that you can definitely set this up to see the changes that you want and do it in a smarter way. Now, twice a day workouts, I would recommend for those of you who are very little on time and you don't have a lot of time to hit up the gym five or six days a week. Those of you who may be in a contest prep, you definitely will need to split your workouts at some point because doing long drawn out workouts three, four hours a day is not going to cut it. You're, you're going to really harm your body, harm your metabolism. So splitting your workouts into two sessions makes a lot of sense. Now, the question we need to also answer is how long should you do this for? Because this isn't something that I would say that you want to do for an extended period of time. Doing this for about four six weeks or so is a perfect way to take your body outside of your comfort zone, especially if you've hit a little bit of a plateau or if you're someone who's more advanced and you really just want to challenge yourself in your workouts. So four to six weeks is a great way to start off with this. Now, for those of you who are a little bit more advanced, you may be able to push it to about six to eight weeks. Again, just listen to your body. Now, after a couple of weeks of doing this, you definitely want to take at least four to six weeks where you go back to a regular schedule once a day workouts, taking down the volume, taking down the intensity, because even though this stuff is good and there is a place for it, you don't want to overdo it. More is not better. Sometimes it simply just is more. So moving in a way, training in a way that makes sense is always going to be important. And understanding the science behind why is also the key factor as well. Now, when it comes to rep ranges, when it comes to sets, how much you should be doing, you wanna follow a typical protocol when it comes to training and what we know, the science. If you're trying to build muscle, anywhere between six to about 12 repetitions, getting to failure by the end of that rep is gonna go ahead and have you build hypertrophy. If you're trying to gain strength, anywhere between one to about five repetitions, that's where you're training more of the central nervous system and that's where you want to be if gaining strength is something that's important to you. And going above 12 repetitions, you're going 15 and up, that's going to build more muscular endurance. And that's a great thing to have in your training as well. So when you're approaching your workouts, mix all of those reps in there. You can do a set where perhaps you start off with 15 repetitions you're doing four sets, increase the weight for each set. So the second set, you might do 12 repetitions, increasing the weight. Third set, 10 repetitions, increasing the weight. Fourth set, 
eight repetitions, increasing the weight. So you're now training between various rep ranges, which helps your body to really just explode and want to adapt because your body is smarter than you, honey. It ain't confused. You confuse. Muscle confusion is not a real thing, okay? But challenging your body is. And when it sees that you're pushing yourself and you're giving it these challenges like twice a day workouts, changing the rep ranges, paying attention to your tempo, working on negatives, drop sets, and all that stuff, your body's like, ah, this person right here is trying to push me real hard. So let me put on some muscle. Let me get stronger. Let me get that balance. Let me move better so I can meet the demands of what I'm being challenged with. So keep that in mind. And when it comes to your diet, it all depends on what your goals are. If you are trying to lose weight, of course, you want to be eating in a deficit. So make sure that you're making that happen. If you want to gain muscle in this process of twice a day, day training, you got to be eating in a surplus. So make sure you're eating more. Now we talked about overtraining and being smart when it comes to your workouts, the things that you need to watch out for and how to train yourself stepping outside of your comfort zone without killing yourself. And I want you to go ahead and watch this next video right over here so we can talk about overtraining, its dangers, and how to approach your workouts in a smarter way. I'll see you over there.